I'm Emily Crawford, and the topics I chose to center my paper on around include the shift from colonialism to post-colonialism in several different countries and the idea of globalization where culture transcends across borders. The main idea of the topic I focused on was what colonialism was and how it was used to be a component in many cultures, but how now post-colonialism has taken the place of colonialism and what is exactly entailed in this ideology of post-colonialism. The second half of my paper focuses on globalization and culture transcending across borders, and specifically what the impact of globalization has had on several cultures, and how it has changed the rhetoric of such. I end my paper with the question of how post-colonialism and globalization has changed the culture of several different countries, and I then wonder about the future impact globalization might have on culture. To have a better understanding of the shift from colonialism to post-colonialism, I'm going to break down both of these parts. Colonialism was when several of the dominant Western countries wanted to grow and expand. Therefore, they picked up different areas of land where weaker countries and cultures resided, and the larger countries began to dominate them and control them through power, force, and culture. On colonialism, Ryan, the author of our textbook, states, Most of the global frameworks that regulate the flow of capital, goods, technology, and information have roots in colonial history. Colonialism is when countries put their power over an entire cultural group or developing nation. Colonialism is enforced through political, military, and economic ways. The reasons as to why colonialism existed in the first place and why it was seen as acceptable was because the countries dominating the developing nations claimed that they were modernizing and civilizing the areas, making them suitable areas to reside. Once colonialism was viewed as wrong and abusive, a post-colonial area came about. Post-colonial means the end of colonialism. When comparing colonial and post-colonial eras, it is necessary to mention that colonialism and globalization go hand in hand, where they support an attempt to create uniform ideology that all civilization practices. But post-colonial views embrace the acceptance of difference and alternative experiences. Colonialism is seen as a controlling force where the developing nation is deprived of resources and available means to grow and expand. On the other hand, post-colonialism is when countries exhibit a more post-modern ideology, for they value their own traditional practices, such as in India the practice of arranged marriages, but also embrace new westernized ideas exhibited through te television and social media, a practice of globalization. Post-colonialism exists to combat the issues faced by non-Westernized countries once controlled by imperialism and colonialism. The goal of post-colonialism is to face the problems along with trying to fix the problems that were once felt by imperialism. Post-colonialism also tries to create the understanding that imperialism still exists in today's society. Yet these countries that practice post-colonialism attempt to ease the tensions between the countries that previously controlled them. When studying post-colonialism, it is necessary to focus on the struggles and colonial exploitation felt by dominated countries and, in turn, understand how these post-colonial cultures overcome these lingering effects. Many areas that feel the relief of stress enabled by post-colonialism include Latin America, Africa, and India. All of these places were previously controlled by colonialism, larger European countries. Yet, with the appearance of post-colonialism, these newly free areas get to determine their own fate and their own successes. Post-colonialism deals with the cultural identity of the newly independent country it is seen as. It is questioned where this identity comes from, whether the country returns to its natural traditional roots or the country remains influenced by the empire that once controlled it. Through my study of the shift from colonialism to post-colonialism and the influence of globalization in different areas of the world, I found how closely related and intertwined some cultures are, regardless of their geographical distance. First, I would like to mention that when countries went from being controlled by colonialism to being free, experienced a post-colonial culture, I think that people observing the switch thought that the way of life in the newly independent country was going to be completely free of influence from the mother country that once dominated the way of life. Unfortunately, they were not exactly correct. Truthfully, the way of life amongst the people in the newly independent country still has influence and is still shaped by the country that used to once control it. For example, India, a country that was once a colony of Britain, is not fully independent from British culture. First, the national sport in India is cricket, and it's cricket due to the fact that the national sport of Britain is cricket as well.
as well as some of the population in India still speaks English as their dominant language, as Ryan mentions in his book. Although there are great feats for these newly independent countries, for a lot of them, they were able to turn back to their old roots in history. For example, in India, as I mentioned before, the practice of arranged marriages is still highly regarded and valued in popular culture, something that is not known to British culture at all. I feel as though these post-colonial cultures have come a long way since they were once fully dominated and controlled, but they still have a lot of room for growth and expansion in their own culture and independence. The next point in my paper that I would like to talk about is globalization. On the surface, globalization is basically just the transmission of ideas and cultural practices across large geographical distances, enabled by the media and communication tools in today's society. Interestingly enough, as Americans, we feel as though globalization is a great thing. It allows for culture to be spread, for people to understand various cultures, and ultimately experience growth as a global world through the sharing of ideas and beliefs that would transmit into success and a wealth of knowledge. Although not everyone feels this way, in the international order there is a lot of American influence. We can see this where in different countries people are walking, watching American TV shows, dressing in American styles, and there are even American fast food restaurants seen all across the world. There is an extreme amount of American as well as Western dominance in the world today, and people are beginning to question whether or not this idea of globalization is turning into an ideology of imperialism. That might be a strong claim that the United States is seeking to take over the world through their cultural influences and the implementation of cultural practices, yet is surely a reasonable claim with definite logic to back such up. There is an extreme amount of American influence, whether that be through the appearance of so many McDonald's in the global world, or the fashion ideals or icons that are American that have shaped the global world. No other country measures up to the influence that the United States has in the global international order when shaping culture. When looking at how all of these topics relate, I was trying to answer how rhetoric and culture connect in relation to colonialism, postcolonialism, and globalization. I feel as though I was trying to make sense of the rhetorical significance of culture and how people use rhetoric to explain their own personal cultures. One of the main points I address is the issue of how culture can transcend across borders between countries due to globalization. I think to look at what this means for the cultures of countries in relations to the other countries, focusing on the similarities and differences between the two. I question what the sharing of culture and appearance of culture in a different geographical location means for the rhetoric of such, and how cultural barriers between countries are somewhat demolished. Culture is a system of beliefs and values shared by a group of people. A part of culture includes the customs and beliefs that people of a specific location practice. Culture and national identity are closely tied. People who all live in a certain area tend to have the same interests. All culture have traditions associated with them. Culture provides a national identity for a specific place, but it does not always stay within the borders of a country. Due to globalization in this post-colonial era, culture transcends across borders. There is the presence of various cultures in different areas of the world. From this, it can be understood that culture is both national and transnational. There are distinct beliefs and practices specific to a particular nation, but there are also similarities between nations due to the flow of information between cultures. Basically, my paper explores the way in which colonialism was abolished and post-colonialism took its place as the backbone of culture in many areas as well as how globalization has transformed culture and what it has done to different cultures, specifically connecting such, despite wide geographical gaps. It is still up to question whether or not Post-colonial cultures are fully independent from the countries and the culture of such that once controlled them. Still, there is wonder if globalization is the great benefit that people of westernized countries have believe it to be, or it is just another form of imperialism that less fortunate countries have to experience and adopt as their own. Has globalization caused cultures to drop their history and beliefs and adopt more westernized beliefs and practices, such as eating in fast, fo fast food restaurants and adopting western style as their national fashion? Through much more ex exploration, and essentially with more time to come, all of these questions will be somewhat answered in more depth and thoroughly from the observations that will be made and the experiences that will be watched. When relating all of these questions and ideas to rhetoric and culture, it is undeniably important to mention culture in the specifics of how a country's culture has changed and will keep changing due to globalization. The rhetoric of a culture and the specifics of such will all be influenced and manipulated by the appearance of globalization.
Finally, I have come to the realization through a rhetorical analysis of globalization and the impact on culture that globalization changes the identity of a culture and changes the dynamic of the local vibe. Some aspects of globalization are seen to be a product of an outsider, someone who does not know the inner workings of a local community and does not have any social connection to them which will then throw off the culture of that local area and the values that community holds. Through the symbolic nature of a community's identity and the disruption of such through globalization, it makes you wonder whether or not globalization always is such a great transmitter of communication and ideas or if it hurts and harms the local culture of a country. Thank you.